I recently found a problem with shooting JPEGs on Fuji X-Trans 2 and 3 sensors in my Fuji X100T and X-T2. Presumably this problem exists in the X-Pro2. And I also found a workaround for it, and that is the issue of waxy looking skin tones in JPEGs. Hey guys, my name is Steve Reichert and you're watching the Adventure Photo Show. This is all about helping you own your story through adventure and then tell that story with a camera. And if you're interested in taking that journey and being part of that with me, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, I found out about this issue recently because I've been shooting a lot with my Fuji X100T, which has the older X-Trans 2 sensor, same as the X-T1 and I, I believe a variety of other X-series cameras. And then of course, I recently got the X-T2, which has a newer, sexier, upgraded X-Trans 3 sensor. And basically the issue is that if you're allowing the camera to process JPEGs internally, so if you're not exporting your images to Lightroom or some other third-party um, software to process them outside of the camera, but the camera is doing the processing, that at higher ISOs, you will get this waxy looking image um, when, at least in the skin tones, when you're shooting people. And this is something that I have not run into because typically I don't let the camera process JPEGs. I actually enjoy processing the raw photos and so I shoot everything raw. I do the processing in Lightroom. Um, a Reddit user by the name of Vaney Pickle, I'm assuming a fellow, um, told me about this workaround which basically boils down to underexposing your images in camera and then processing them in camera by adding in exposure so that effectively what you're doing is you're limiting the ISO when you're shooting JPEGs that are being processed in the camera. So typically what I do is I let my ISO roam um, wherever it wants to go in order to control and manipulate my shutter speed and my aperture manually. And as long as I can get those effects dialed in, I'm not really too worried about having an image um, deteriorate in quality with either the X-Trans 2 sensor from the older X100T or the X-T2 because I know that since I edit my raw files in Lightroom, I don't have to worry about this waxy skin issue. And what happens is if you allow that ISO to go higher, um, and it's certainly more noticeable in the older X-Trans 2 sensor than it is in the X-T2, which has the X-Trans 3 sensor, but it still does happen with the X-T2, and presumably it also happens with the X-Pro2, although I have not shot with the X-Pro2 personally, so if I'm wrong about that, I apologize. Um, and if you guys know anything about this, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. I just wanted to share this because I found out about it and I thought it could be useful to you guys, and also I may use it at some point in the future if I do want in-camera JPEG processing from any of my Fuji cameras. So basically what I have done is I, I tested um, the solution that um, Reddit user Vaney Pickle um, shared with me and that was to basically underexpose by two stops when you're in camera so that you're able to keep the ISO down and then when you process that JPEG in camera and this still requires you to shoot in RAW but you would process the raw image in camera instead of in Lightroom. So that may or may not be a help to you guys, but um, if you shoot at a lower ISO, and I did test shots, uh, indoor lighting, kind of low light. Uh, my wife was kind enough to model for me after getting back from um, four days of flying, and the light was kind of suboptimal when we walked in the door, and I just gotten this message, so I was like, let me try this out. So I shot at ISO 800, and then I shot at a couple of higher ISOs to see where this started to really take effect. And I noticed that with the X-T2, because of course it's got the newer X-Trans 3 sensor in it, the smeary skin tones don't really start to become noticeable until you're over 3200 ISO. So there is obviously some improvement and it certainly is less significant and less noticeable than it is with the X100T and the older sensor. But shooting um, at ISO 800, I was able to get 
a lot more detail in the JPEG, even though in camera looking at it before I processed it, the image was pretty underexposed. So when I created the JPEG out of the RAW, I added two stops of exposure um, through the push-pull sub-menu in the, the raw processing um, dialog there in, in the camera, and then I found that that actually was a great solution. I'm actually going to make a separate video giving more details about why I like to shoot raw, and not just from a standpoint of having higher image quality. For me, it's a part of the creative process that really um, happens when you're editing stuff on your computer and it's a little bit more deliberate. Um, if you want to see that and if you enjoyed this video also, I would love it if you subscribe to this channel. Make sure that you comment, let me know what your experience has been, um, share this video if you think it could help other people, and certainly you can connect with us on social media. You can read the blog um, at my website which is all linked below, that's livingvertical.org. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, you can get printed work of mine as well as ebooks, all, um, and exclusive other insights from visiting patreon.com slash living vertical because those of you who are supporting this channel and the work that I'm doing, the documentary projects that I have upcoming for 2017, which I'm going to be telling you about in the next week or so, I'm kind of behind on some videos here just talking about tech technical stuff. Um, those of you who, who support the channel really make a huge difference and enable me to keep creating content for you guys. So thank you very much. I appreciate the time that you've taken to watch this video. My name is Steve Riker, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Adventure Photo Show.